Hello world, it's Siraj, and welcome to my new course titled Machine Learning Journey. If you're a student, or between jobs, or in a different field, this 10-week course will help you learn everything you need, from marketing your skills, to learning the best tools, to building a solid mathematical foundation, to techniques to stay up to date on the latest breakthroughs, in order to get a job or start your own venture as a machine learning engineer or data scientist. This course will be free and publicly available on YouTube. I do this for you. All I ask is for you to hit the subscribe button to get notified when I release new content. In this video, I'll show you how to write the perfect resume for a machine learning or data science position. Sending in your resume is the universal first step in landing an interview for a position at any company. Yes, eventually there will be more efficient ways to assess candidate skills, but for now we have to deal with the art and science of resume writing. I've gone through this process several times for the companies I've worked for, as well as reviewed resumes for job positions I've been recruiting for, and the amount of misinformation around this resume writing process is what got me to create this tutorial. If we look at the data on resumes, it's pretty surprising. The average interviewer spends only six seconds scanning a resume, and usually interviewers won't even look at your resume until you walk into the room because the vast majority of resumes are first screened by automated systems. 58% of resumes have typos and 75% of all resumes are automatically discarded by these systems. Clearly, having a great resume is the most important part in landing a machine learning position. And once you get that down, you can start focusing on other more advanced tactics like genetic modification to help you stand out from the masses. Application Tracking Systems, or ATS, has introduced a new gatekeeper to the job search process. These are automated filtering algorithms that can rate resumes based on a few factors. So submitting a resume that isn't optimized for an ATS is the biggest mistake you can make as a job applicant, also applying to Theranos. The reason companies use an ATS is because an AI can scan millions of resumes per minute and discard up to 80% of them automatically, which means the recruiter only has to worry about the top 20%, a massive time saver. Historically, recruiters would have to read every single resume, but AI allows them to scale in a way they couldn't otherwise. It's safe to assume any company you're applying to will very likely be using an ATS. When an AI is given a candidate resume, its first step is to parse that resume to find expected sections, meaning it will be programmed to search for information on your work experience, your education, your skills, etc. And while AI is good at parsing, it can't interpret slang just yet. So if you title a section about your work experience as previous gigs, it'll likely ignore that section completely since it doesn't know what a gig is. What that means is you'll need to use standard plain English resume sections. The four major ones you should list are work experience, education, skills, and projects. I've found that NovoResume.com is a really helpful tool to generate a resume template that works for you. They've got a lot of options and it's free. As you're writing your resume, a good thought experiment is to step into your prospective employer's shoes. If you were them, what would you be looking for in a candidate? You can craft an elevator pitch for yourself, a short summary that describes your most impressive accomplishments and use that as a guide to help you write your resume detailing those points even more in just one page. The ATS wants to match your resume with certain keywords that are found in the job description for that specific job. So let's say for a given position, we see this paragraph as part of the job description. We can pick out keywords from it that sound important and use those in our resume. We can use the tool wordclouds.com and paste in the entire job description page 
page into the word list. It'll spit out an image that showcases every word in the job description, letting us use the most frequent ones. Welcome to the resistance. When we start writing a resume, it's beneficial to use bullet points instead of paragraphs, as those have been shown to be beneficial for ATS software, while using a photo isn't. It also might go without saying, but definitely use the same font throughout the resume. I recommend sans serif. And since employers don't have much time to read resumes, make sure to list your most impressive accomplishments first. Don't just try and list every single thing you've done since high school like lead hacking NASA. While chronological resume listings are common, when it comes to a cutting edge field like machine learning, skills and experience matter more than history and degrees. So that means put the most impressive section first, the most impressive experience first, the most important bullet point first. Each of your bullet points points should be ruthlessly concise, as this reflects your communication skills. For example, a bad bullet point would be training and optimizing a support vector machine learning model on a dataset to predict the quality of avocados with an accuracy of 98%. A better bullet point would be trained a support vector machine to predict avocado quality with 98% quality. This way, we aren't reusing similar words and we keep it simple. These these bullet points should show, not tell. Numbers and metrics let you show the impact you can have rather than relying on filler words. Instead of saying you significantly improved conversion rates, say that you doubled conversion rates from 0.5% to 1%. The same rules apply for past projects. Show, don't tell. It's better to say you trained a neural net on 10K images to classify rubber ducks than you gained extensive experience with neural nets. This makes you more memorable and acts as an easy talking point during the in-person interview. And this applies to academic coursework as well, since grading and naming conventions vary from school to school. Instead of saying you got an A in NLP, say you wrote a web crawler to scrape and parse text data for NLP algorithms. When you're done writing your resume, give it to a friend with no background in machine learning to review. They ideally should still be able to identify your key credentials, even if they don't understand all the terms. They'll also be able to tell you if they see any grammatical errors. Liberal arts majors, we love you. After that, you can get a free resume review from topresume.com from a resume expert to double check your work. When you're ready to submit your resume, don't use a PDF as it's not very ATS friendly. Use a Word file or a plain text file because it's much easier to parse. And because job descriptions can vary so much between companies for the same position, it's best if we make multiple copies of our resume and tailor each of them to whatever company we're applying to. We can keep a master version of our resume as a base and make spin-offs from it. Oh, and a lot of the more advanced systems can automatically scan for your other social media profiles and use that data as part of its decision-making process. So if there's anything you wanna keep private, make sure to lock it down with maximum privacy settings. Sometimes you'll be asked to send in a cover letter with your resume. For this, I like to follow a simple two paragraph format. The first paragraph should tell the company why you want to work for them. Use a single specific reason and elaborate on it. The second paragraph should tell the company why they should hire you. Highlight the exact things you're going to bring to the company and back it up with a specific specific example. So having a great resume is key to getting an interview, but GitHub acts in many ways as an unofficial resume, especially in this field, because it doesn't just say the work you've done, it showcases it for anyone to analyze since it's open source. It gives employers a clearer idea of your technical skills. Have at least two projects here that you can showcase. Make sure the code works, it's well documented in the README with both installation and how to run instructions. Ideally, you have an image of the demo in the README as well, and of course, a link 
to a web app version so anyone can try it in the browser themselves. There are a few great resources that I recommend to help you further refine your resume and I've listed them all in the video description. Ready to start applying? I've got so many more tips. Hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on my programming videos and for now I've got to review some resumes so thanks for watching.